when it comes to the most celebrated iconic figures of the 20th century, there is no denying that Marilyn Monroe is a legend, recognized as one of the most iconic actresses of all time. But while old Hollywood legends and royal princesses alike may have been revered for their enviable style and penchant for luxury, they also grappled with troubled upbringings and tumultuous relationships throughout their lifetimes. For instance, everyone knows that Marilyn Monroe's birth name was Norma Jean Baker. But do you know how she got her stage name, the Blonde Bombshell? I <laughs> guess not. Well, not to worry, because in this video, we'll be delving past the curtain of glamorous celebrity to discover some secret moments that humanize this icon of yesterday. So make sure you watch this video to the end, smash the subscribe button for three days of great luck, comment I subscribed, and we'll try our best to reply to you. With that out of the way, let's get right behind the curtains. Born June 1, 1926, Marilyn Monroe was an American actress and singer famous for playing comedic blonde bombshell characters. Raised in Los Angeles, Monroe spent most of her childhood in foster homes and an orphanage due to her tough childhood. But life wasn't going to be the same for her as she quickly rose to stardom in becoming one of the major icons of pop culture. Her real name is Norma Jean Mortensen. On her birth certificate, Monroe's real name is Norma Jean Mortensen and baptized as Norma Jean Baker, named after her foster father, John Newton Baker. In 1923, Gladys divorced Newton Baker, who kidnapped her children soon after and moved with them to his native Kentucky. Monroe never knew she had a sister until she was 12 and met her sister for the first time as an adult. Following her divorce, Gladys got married to Martin Edward Mortensen and divorced four years after. Martin was reportedly said to be Monroe's father, but in another finding, the identity of Monroe's father is unknown and she most often used Baker as her surname. On top of that, she modeled under the names Jean Norman and Mona Monroe and only legally changed her name to Marilyn Monroe in March 1956 when she was already a star. At that time, the name was so unfamiliar to her that the first time she signed an autograph as Marilyn Monroe, she had to ask how to spell it. Her first marriage was arranged. Growing up in and out of 11 foster homes, state care, and under the guardianship of various family friends, Marilyn never knew her father and her mother had been committed to a psychiatric facility. At 15, Marilyn stayed with family friend Grace Goddard, who decided to move to West Virginia and couldn't take Baker. And unless she got married early, she would have been turned back over to an orphanage. To escape the ordeal of returning to an orphanage home, they turned to 20-year-old James Doherty next door and suggested a marriage. They got married just 18 days after she turned 16. A few years after, she found herself and Doherty mismatched and later stated that she was dying of boredom during the marriage and ended up filing for a divorce. She was a major Hollywood sex symbol. In 1953, Monroe starred in three movies where she emerged as a major sex symbol and one of Hollywood's most bankable performers. The first film she featured in was Technicolor Film Noir Niagara in which she played a femme fatale scheming to murder her husband, Joseph Cotton. She became her blonde bombshell persona. While her first featured movie, Niagara, made her a sex symbol and established her look, her second film, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, acted in 1953, cemented her screen persona as a dumb blonde. Based on Anita Luce's novel, the film tells the story of two gold-digging showgirls played by Monroe and Jane Russell. Monroe was fast eclipsing herself as a star who could appeal to both male and female audiences. Though experienced, she hated being in front of the camera. After working with Monroe on Bus Stop, Oscar-nominated actor Don Murray noted that while her talent was undeniable, she was never fully comfortable in front of the camera. She was a very experienced film actress, but she could forget so many of the mechanical techniques. She would constantly miss her marks, so she would be out of focus or out of the light or in a shadow, Murray said. Acclaim Marriage to Arthur Miller on June 29, 1956, Monroe and Miller got married at the Westchester County Court with a Jewish ceremony at the home of Kay Brown. 
With the marriage, she became converted to Judaism, which led Egypt to ban all her films. Due to Monroe's status as a sex symbol and Miller's image as an intellectual, many media, like Variety's headline, saw the union as a mismatch. She married baseball player Joe DiMaggio. After her marriage with Miller, Monroe got into marriage with baseball player Joe DiMaggio. However, they didn't stay married for long. And among the many reasons that led to their breakup was the infamous scene on the Seven Year Itch movie, where Marilyn's skirt flies up. This popular scene had DiMaggio feeling extremely uncomfortable over his wife's overexposure and terribly enraged by it. The couple got into a fight over it, and allegedly, according to some reports, escalated into physical aggression from DiMaggio towards Marilyn. She was obsessed with reading. One of Marilyn's favorites was her passion for reading. With over 400 books in her library, she once told a director that found her reading R.M. Rilke's Letters to a Young Poet that when she has nothing to do, she would just go into a bookstore and read a random book. If she liked it, she goes for it. Her dresses are worth millions today. Marilyn Monroe's dresses are worth millions today. One of her famous dresses she wore when she sang Happy Birthday, Mr. President to John F. Kennedy sold for a world record price at auction, bringing in $4.8 million. This was one of the defining dresses of 20th century fashion, with instant sensation that turned heads when worn by the likes of Beyonce and Kim Kardashian today. Her estate earned much more money following Monroe's passing. At the height of her career, Marilyn had a million-dollar contract for two films. During the same time frame, Elizabeth Taylor was paid one million dollars for her role in Cleopatra alone. It's estimated that Marilyn was worth about 20 million dollars at the time of her death, which is nothing to sneeze at. But these days, her estate is making 30 million dollars a year. She had flowers delivered to her grave for 20 years. Before her death, Marilyn Monroe made Joe DiMaggio, her ex-husband, promise to leave flowers on her grave every week if she died before him. He kept her promise, and had half a dozen red roses delivered three times a week to her crypt for 20 years. Her Later Life and Probable Death in her later years, Monroe suffered from endometriosis, a painful condition in which tissue from the uterine lining leave the uterus, attach themselves to other areas of the body, and grow, causing severe pain, irregular bleeding, and infertility. And on August 5, 1962, she was discovered dead at her home on Fifth Helena Drive in Brentwood. She had a phone in one of her hands, and her body was completely nude and face down on her bed. There was no odor of drugs on her mouth, as would be consistent with suicide pill ingestion. There was also no report of alcohol or water near the bed where she was found, as would also be typical. However, Marilyn's death was ruled as a probable suicide. The toxicology report showed that the cause of her death was acute barbiturate poisoning. When the deputy coroner tried to obtain her other organs for testing, he was told they'd been destroyed. Details like this have become part of the myriad conspiracy theories surrounding the star's death, as she was said to have signed a two-picture deal with Fox that would have been worth $1 million, which would have been the biggest payday of her career. Controversies Surrounding Her Death Marilyn's death remains controversial, as many sources believe she was murdered because she threatened to reveal details about her love affairs with John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy. Several publications revealed unverified claims that Bobby Kennedy, Dr. Ralph Greenson, her psychiatrist, and the CIA conspired to murder her with a fatal dose of pentobarbital and an enema filled with broken down nembutals. As of 2016, these remain conspiracies, not proven statements. Warren Beatty saw her last. One of the last people that saw Marilyn Monroe alive was 25-year-old Warren Beatty, who met her at a producer's home during a party. In a 2016 interview with Beatty, he said the two of them spent the evening together, which involved Beatty playing piano for her and a moonlit walk along the shore which he described as more soulful than romantic. Unfortunately, Monroe died the next day. Monroe was not the airhead that the public of her time considered her to be. She was a thoughtful, sensitive, and intelligent woman who, by all accounts, was ahead of her time. 
Both on screen and off, she captured the hearts of many and managed to become one of the most influential women in history. For that, we celebrate her. Did we miss anything in this list? If yes, let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button for greater days of luck, and we will be right back with more interesting videos.